The newest DLC for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition is upon us. Victors and Vanquished brings 19 new single player scenarios to play across a variety of factions and settings for a price of $12.99 US dollars. And the question for today is, why does everyone hate it? On Steam it's sitting at mostly negative, easily the worst reviewed DLC for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition, so what gives? Well, let's look at what's actually included in the DLC, what I think of it, and see if we can't get to the bottom of this. Because I'm going to go against the grain here, I think Victors and Vanquished is pretty good, pretty great even. And I think these reviews are way off base. Since its release, this is the first AoE2 DLC that doesn't include any new civilizations, or any new multiplayer or skirmish content at all. This is a purely single player expansion, with 19 new scenarios to play as a solo player only. My biggest criticism is that none of these are co-op, but we'll get to that and a couple of other things I don't like a bit later. Let's talk about the quality of the scenarios first. They're really, really good. Presentation wise it's nothing you haven't seen from an Age of Empires 2 campaign before, simple animated briefs with some voice acting that help to set the scene. Thankfully though there's a lot of them because each of the missions are their own standalone thing, featuring a large map, new characters and unique settings. But where these stand out are not in their presentation, it's the mission design. There's a ton of variety here and I was quite impressed with how many unique mechanics and objectives there are across all these different missions. There are mechanics that require you to manage vassal happiness, lest you face a rebellion. Another where population is governed by the number of settlements you can raid and capture. And another where you play as a horde civilization where villages can only be captured and buildings are constructed by capturing caravans. And the objectives are also just as varied. You'll basically never be repeating the same thing twice, at least not in the exact same way. We've come a long way from the simple destroy enemy base requirement of the old days. I think my favourite scenario is the one where you play as the Slavs, as Mr. Slav the Bold. Here you're required to unite the warring Rus factions before a monolithic, unknown threat from the east tramples all over you, and I wonder who that could be. This scenario has some unique mechanics around population, which can only be increased by capturing villages and camps, as well as how those villages actually work. Instead of you having direct control, instead they manage themselves as you liberate them, leaving you to focus on your forces and alliances as you prepare for the invasion to come. Like many of the other scenarios, I liked this one because of its more sandbox nature. You're free to approach objectives in any way you please, and there are even optional ones that significantly alter the mission should you choose to engage in them. And this is just one scenario, I'm not going to go through every one as we'd be here for a long time, because despite only being single map, one mission scenarios, any one of these can go for a long time, especially on higher difficulties. You could easily spend multiple hours on some of these if you want to take your time, and with 19 total to choose from, there is no question about the sheer amount of content on offer here. What there is some question about though is the fact that only 5 of these 19 scenarios are actually brand new, because if you didn't know, 14 of these are remasters. Before this they were actually already available on the Steam Workshop. Now they've been polished, given some voice acting, and some light presentation elements, and they're boxed up for a price. As you may have guessed, a lot of people have a problem with this. It's particularly apparent in the Steam reviews, with the expansion currently sitting at mostly negative, with the majority of complaints being aimed at the reselling of free missions, and that there's no multiplayer component with the DLC at all. Let's address the first part of that. Yes, I can understand why some people would be upset with the fact that the bulk of these scenarios weren't created absolutely fresh for this DLC. And if that's you, then you're welcome to not buy this expansion and move on. The reason I don't think this is an issue is that this was always advertised to be the case. It's not like this was a rug pull at the last minute where you only found out that 14 of the missions were remasters after you'd put your money down. It's the same for complaints about how there's no new civs or multiplayer content. Again, you can be upset about it, sure, 
but this was always positioned as a single player only DLC, from the second it was announced. It's like going to your local McDonald's and being angry that they won't make you a Whopper. It's like, what'd you expect? All of this information was available before you and you alone decided to make the purchase, so who's to blame but yourself? Because yeah, you're absolutely right. If you wanted to, you could go and download most of these missions for yourself and get 80 to 90% of the same experience, except for the five brand new ones. But not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone wants to scour the workshop to find the best missions. And like me, there's many out there that would be more than happy to pay a bit of money to get a curated, polished experience like we have here with Victors and Vanquished. Because they are polished, they are curated. These are great missions that will take hours to clear in their entirety, with multiple difficulty options, lots of faction variety, and buckets of unique objectives and mechanics. Frankly, I'm kind of annoyed that all the reviews on Steam are full of people moulding about something not being the product they expected, when all of that information was there to be absorbed before they bought it. I'd rather have the reviews be filled with useful information, constructive criticism, and helpful recommendations. Instead, we just get stuff like this. Like, bro, we know, it's literally in the description two scrolls up. And for those who have seen my videos before, you know I'm not a mindless fanboy who will come to defend every piece of Age of Empires 2 DLC. In fact, I was quite harsh on Return of Rome, for example, and I'm pretty sure that video got me on the naughty list because I haven't received any review code for any new Age of Empires 2 DLCs since I released it. But I did give a good review to Mountain Royals because I thought it was a great expansion, aside from the cost being a little high for the content that was included. And yeah, I do have some problems with Victors and Vanquished. I think it's a huge own goal to not have any of the scenarios be able to be played co-op. I think co-op campaigns in Age of Empires are some of the most fun you can have in the game, yet any new additions to the co-op options are fleeting. Even if it was only co-op in the sense that you could play as the same colour, it'd be simple, but it would be something. Also, I haven't fully decided yet on the value proposition of this DLC. In my review for the previous expansion, Mountain Royals, my biggest issue was the price. I thought it was simply too expensive for what was included. Just two new factions and a single player campaigns for $14.99. Victors and Vanquished is cheaper at $12.99, but I still think it's a little steep, especially considering the number of scenarios that, yes, are just remakes, and not completely new. Personally, I reckon $9.99 would have been a more appropriate price, but that's just me. So with that, let's look at recommendations. If you enjoy Age of Empires 2 single player content, and you want more of it, this is an easy buy. The missions are well designed, content rich, and unique from start to finish. If you're on the fence, or only think you'd want to play a few of the missions, then despite that, I'd say there's nothing here that is worth an instant buy. So maybe wait for a sale. And if you don't care about single player, or mostly only care about multiplayer, you can skip this one. Though, I hope you could have figured that one out for yourself, because according to the reviews, apparently not everyone did. Thanks so much for watching. If you'd like to support me and what I do here, then you can do so by becoming a supporter on Patreon or YouTube for as little as $1 a month. You'll join legends like Takayo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Grey Spirit 4, George, Nedas, John Kaiser, King Thickums, Pavel, Bram, Christian, Dan, Bishop's Arch, Orion, Dus Rufkin, and Cameron. And my paladins, Johnny, Marika, Age of Cause, Joe, Tank, and Imperian. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.